the fuck are you talking about, you cokehead junkie? MMA is one of the most exciting sports in the world. Not every fight can be a banger, and over the years there's a host of fighters whose styles have earned their share of critics. This is a list of fighters with reputations for dull matches, some justified on others. Oh, oh, sorry, I lost interest. Welcome to INC, and these are five boring MMA fighters. Tyron Woodley fights end one of two ways. Spectacular highlight reel knockout or a laboured decision in front of an angry crowd. It's the latter which saw the welterweight champ come under fire in 2017. At UFC 209, Woodley defended his title against Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. The two had fought in an epic battle four months earlier and the UFC brass hoped for an all-action war to keep the Vegas crowd on the edge of their seats. Norris, do something! Woodley retained his crown by unanimous decision, but his conservative approach saw him come under fire from both fans and critics. Despite that, Woodley got the chance to redeem himself against jiu-jitsu black belt Damian Meyer. Woodley gave a faultless performance to neutralise Meyer's takedowns, but in doing so broke the record for the least strikes thrown in a title fight, a fact not lost on UFC president Dana White. It's easy to say a win is a win, but when you get booed out of an arena, it means people don't want to watch you fight, you know? And that's how you make a living. It's not good if people don't want to watch you fight. Woodley went away to answering his questions in 2018, putting in a dominant effort to beat British star Darren Till at UFC 228. Woodley holds a 19-3 and record and is unbeaten in his past seven fights. John Fitch was long considered the benchmark for boring fighters. Fitch recovered from a slow start to become a, one of MMA's most dominant welterweights, with a 16-fight winning streak seeing him challenge George St. Pierre for the welterweight title. Despite his record, Fitch became one of the sport's most maligned fighters, thanks in part to a slow, grinding style and content to leave the result in the hands of the judges, including a four-year decision streak between 2007 and 2011. Fitch's UFC tenure did have some highlights, namely a back-and-forth match with Eric Silva that earned the Indiana native his sole post-fight bonus and helping ease financial tensions that threatened to end his MMA career. Despite this, the UFC looked for any opportunity to rid themselves of Fitch and against Johnny Hendricks at UFC 141, those prayers were finally answered. After a spell with the WSOF, Fitch is currently signed with Bellator, where his reputation got so bad, even his opponents got bored during his fights. Of this Fucking boring. Call main event. Paul Daly is giving, giving us his own commentary. Get this, motherfucker. And he's dropping F-bombs and This motherfucker's going to watch this, watch this is shit. The heavyweight division boasts some of MMA's most explosive fighters and Jared Rosholt. A four-time state wrestling champion, Rosholt was once considered one of the division's biggest prospects, amassing an eight and one record including a 30-second knockout in his last fight before joining the UFC. After arriving in a promotion, Rosholt's style took a conservative turn, content to hold his opponent against the fence with little attempt of improving position. Rosholt's fighting style was effective, claiming wins over Tim Johnson and Stefan Struve. With his unapologetic nature, saw the wrestler become a figure of scorn, with Rosholt fanning the flames further when questioned about the criticism. For every dig I get from somebody, I get 50, you know, compliments. So it's just like, you know, get a life, man. You know, I have, I have better stuff to do than sit around and listen to this. You know, I just, here you go, you, I block you off my stuff and I'll never think of you again, ever. In February 2016, Rosholt took on big country Roy Nelson at Fight Night 82. Nelson's all-action style made him one of the UFC's most popular fighters and was seen as the perfect man to get the best out of Rosholt. The fight would be the worst of Rosholt's tenure, 
making zero effort to engage with Nelson and limiting the heavyweights to just 78 strikes between them. Rocholt became the first man to take Nelson to a decision, but his negative display saw him axed by the UFC despite a 6-2 and two record and being one of the division's youngest fighters. Now 32, Rocholt competes for the Professional Fight League and currently holds a record of 17 wins and 6 losses. Antonio McKee was so boring it ended up damaging his career. Between 2003 and 2010, McKee amassed a 15 winning streak in regional promotions around the world, but his style was considered so boring no company would risk signing him. Most of McKee's fights during this spell would follow the same routine. A well-executed takedown, doing enough to avoid a stand-up, and settling for the judge's decision. It should also be noticed that while McKee has three stoppages on his record, two of those came through his opponents getting injured. McKee's dull style was made worse thanks to his trash talk, accusing the UFC of racism for not signing him and boasting he could beat welterweight legend George St. Pierre. St. Pierre's wrestling is not better than mine. His takedown defense is not better than mine. His striking seems to appear to be better than mine. But for the right amount of money, you know, you're going to get some what you're looking for. Yeah, 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 McKee's boring, boring. Fuck you. McKee would have one sole fight in the UFC against fellow wrestler Jacob Volkman, losing a largely forgettable match by judges' decision. It's a McKee fight. What do you expect? Now retired, McKee guides the MMA career of his son AJ, who has already taken steps to erasing his father's reputation. And that's where we're talking about. Oh! Former UFC heavyweight champ Tim Sylvia came for grief during his tenure. Back in the early 2000s, Sylvia was considered one of the heavyweight division's most exciting fighters, winning 16 fights in a row, including knockouts of Rico Rodriguez and Andrei Arlovsky. At UFC 61, Arlovsky and Sylvia squared off in a high-profile trilogy fight, and with their first two fights ending in dramatic fashion, Fans were hoping for more of the same. Come on, get going, let's go, come on! Gotta throw! From then on, Sylvia's focus became less about winning and more trying not to lose, maintaining distance with his jab and happy to clinch should his opponent get too close for comfort. His matches with Jeff Monson and Brandon Vera considered some of the worst in heavyweight history. With heavyweight fighters thriving in pride, Sylvie became a scapegoat for the UFC's division's failings, while his cumbersome physique and awkward persona further hindered his profile. After leaving the UFC in 2008, Sylvia's fortunes took a nosedive, losing a match to aging boxer Ray Mercer and weighing in for a match in 2015 a hundred pounds above the commission weight limit. Sylvia retired shortly after and today owns a roofing company in his native Maine. And now, time for a few dishonourable mentions. Former Strikeforce champion Jake Shields was known by fans as the sleeper. It's easy to see why. This MMA fight is boring. Literally. Ben Askren was once described by Dana White as a sleeping cure for Ambien. This should be fun. This is the INC and thank you for watching.